She was vicious and dangerous and constantly threatened us, proclaiming in a sadistic voice, I'll denounce you and then you'll be out of here, you know where. There's only one way up the chimney. We hated her and we were afraid. At Raven's Brett camp, those who saw her for the first time called her mother. She was an aged woman, sweet and statuesque at first sight. In reality, she was far from the image of a mother. Once she took two girls aged six and seven, who were the daughters of European Poles by the arms to a remote barrack at the edge of the camp. She led them to a building with a huge stovepipe. In the building, the victims were undressed, given soap and told they were going to be disinfected in the shower. When they entered the barracks converted into showers, they rejoiced, thinking that after bathing they would get a tasty meal, as the guards had promised them. When the faucets were opened, the shower was no longer running water, but gas. The victims slowly suffocated from the choking gas, their eyes watered, they lost consciousness, and some began to defecate under themselves. That day, those two girls, Maria and Rosa, were in the shower. They had been promised that after the shower, they would get extra food to share with their mother. They did not know that at that time, the Nazis were killing children because they could not be used for their hard work. The front was getting closer and closer to Germany, and so it was easier to get rid of the children than to feed them. On that day, March 15, 1945, the pipes carrying the gas leaked and the gas mixed with the oxygen and did not work properly. The victims were tortured for hours instead of quickly suffocating and dying. They wandered around the barracks with glassy eyes, vomiting, laughing desperately, some banging their heads against the wall or screaming in agony. Even the guards were shocked by what was happening. Then they decided to turn the gas back on, but the supervisors were unaware of the leak in the pipes. After another hour, some of the victims became like zombies. They stood against the walls without moving, while others lay on the floor as if they were drunk. Maria and Rosa tried to find fresh air and climbed onto the pile of bodies lying in the corner of the barracks to reach the ventilation system, thinking that fresh air was coming from there. But it wasn't. There was no air coming into the barracks. Then it was decided to shoot all the survivors. Ten people came into the barracks with guns, and they started shooting everyone. The little girls at first rushed to the door and held out their arms, hoping they would be rescued. But when they realized they had been killed, they hugged each other and that is how they found their death. After the execution, the bodies were taken to the crematorium. Five or six people at a time were put in the incinerator. Their legs and arms had to be broken so the bodies could fit into the furnace. Afterwards, the ashes were finally ground up to make it easier to get rid of. That day, along with Maria and Rosa, another 30 children and 40 adults were killed. Nothing was left of them but ashes. Emma Zimmer was the woman who often took the children to the gas chamber. She called herself Mama Emma. The children trusted her and followed her instructions. She also took their belongings and undressed them before they died. If they didn't listen to her, she would beat the children. Mama Emma, why are you hitting me? Asked one girl before she died, and Emma answered, because a bastard like you doesn't deserve to live. Who was this mother, Emma? Emma Anna Maria Zimmer, née Messel, born August 14, 1888. She was a wardress at Lichtenberg, Ravensbrück, and Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camps. Emma was the eldest child of Oskar Messel, a pharmacist, and his wife, Maria. In 1938, she became a guard at the Lichtenberg concentration camp, where she became assistant camp commander under Johann Langfeld. In 1939, she was sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp, where she served as assistant camp commander, and in October 1942, she became assistant camp commander at Auschwitz EU Birkenau, as SS Stelvertretend Avrosarin. At her 55 years, she was the oldest adult female guard. Emma drank a lot. It even led to her early dismissal from the service. On one occasion, it resulted in two men nearly escaping during her shift. Emma got drunk and fell asleep. Two female prisoners almost made it to the far end of the camp where there was a hill near the fence. They started digging under the fence behind the hill to get outside the camp. But they were spotted. When Emma found out, she beat the two women to death with a stick. She beat them so long that the victims' heads became a mess. After that, she went to her barracks and got drunk again. And one time her co-worker noticed she was drunk 
and said she couldn't work like that, that she should sober up. Then Emma brought in a young girl of about 16. She told her to take off her clothes. Then she made her drink a whole bottle of alcohol. The girl was so drunk she couldn't stand up. Then Emma started beating the girl. She was for almost an hour doing it slowly with gusto. She beat the girl on the head with her boots until she died. After that, Emma said to her colleague, well, what can I work with? See, alcohol is not a problem. Many Nazi concentration camp workers were arrested and put on trial for murder and acts of brutality against prisoners after World War II. About 3,600 women worked in concentration camps and about 60 were tried before war crimes tribunals between 1945 and 1949. A total of 5,000 men and women were convicted of war crimes, more than 500 of whom were sentenced to death. It was decided that those sentenced to death should be executed by hanging. During the investigation two months before Emma Zimmer's execution, something important came to light. Emma's sister Elisa told investigators at the trial that she had kept a terrible secret all her life. It turns out that she and Emma had been abused as children by her uncle. He was a farmer, and when the girls went to live with him, after their father died and their mother was very ill. Uncle Carl was a beast, and although everyone in town respected him, he brutally abused the two sisters who were only nine and ten years old. This went on until their majority until they left him. This seems to have broken Emma Zimmer's mind. Although it didn't save her from execution, it does give insight into why she was such a horrible person. She hated families and children, she hated those who were happy, as she herself had suffered terribly as a child. Apparently, that's why she drenched her pain with alcohol and was such a sadist. Emma Zimmer faced her seventh trial in Ravensbruck and was sentenced to death for her war crimes. She was hanged on the gallows at Amlin Prison on September 20, 1948. She was 60 years old.